When Ubisoft announced Far Cry 6, I was really skeptical about it. But the skepticism mainly came from my experience with Far Cry 5 and New Dawn. With the former having one of the best villains in the series, to the latter featuring some of the worst decisions in the franchise's history. Decisions such as the inclusion of RPG mechanics and underwhelming antagonists. All of these points had me worried about Far Cry 6. I thought to myself, how can Far Cry 6's villain beat the likes of Joseph Seed from Far Cry 5 or even Voss and Pagan Mean from older games? But seeing a great actor such as Giancarlo Esposito taking the role of the game's main antagonist had me really excited. I thought this was going to be the next best thing that has ever happened to the franchise. And to be fair, I wasn't the only one to think like that, as other gamers across the internet thought so as well. Time has passed, and the game was released in late 2021. My fears turned out to be true, sadly. It felt like the lead development team behind the game, which is now Ubisoft Toronto instead of Ubisoft Montreal, had no idea what Far Cry is about, despite their previous experience with the franchise. When playing Far Cry 6, no matter what angle I looked at the game, there was always something off about it. And after spending much needed time in the game, I'm going to tell you exactly why Far Cry 6 didn't feel like a Far Cry game. Far Cry 6 detached itself from previous games by removing some of the factors that made those games unique. Factors such as the presence of a persisting villain. If I was going to point out what exactly made Far Cry 3's antagonist memorable, I would say it was Voss's insanity speech. Or in Far Cry 4, Pagan Mean's ruthlessness along with his manipulative powers made him special. Even in Far Cry 5, Joseph Seed's son of the god cult leader behavior made a terrifying figure out of him in my eyes. The villains in the older games would either appear before you and threaten to kill you directly, or most of the time, they would talk to you over the radio. So, you could always feel their presence throughout your journey. Every single one of them knew our protagonists by their names, recalled their actions, and warned them about their future steps. Each antagonist had that it factor in them. They would always make you question your choices and ask yourself whether you're the bad guy or not. They could easily go under your skin and act as a constant threat. But when it comes to Far Cry 6, none of those factors exist. The only thing I can say about it is that Anton Castillo was a dictator in the most generic way possible, portrayed by the same dude who played Gus Fring in Breaking Bad. He is the most boring villain in the entire franchise, and the saddest part is that it's not because of Giancarlo's acting, since that is literally the only good part about this character that remains underutilized to the end. While you can see his statues scattered across the world, most of the time you're hearing his speech from speakers, and occasionally, when you cause enough havoc, you get to see him in a couple of cutscenes, which isn't directly occurring during the gameplay, and you don't even get to fight with him. His story is always told through a third-person lens in a separate cutscene, which takes away from the immersion and the atmosphere of the game. You can't feel the depth of his threats while he's sitting in a church talking to his son about how Castillos are lions and the people of Yara are a bunch of sheep. Anton acts as if he doesn't know anything about Danny Rojas, the protagonist of the game and the only person responsible for uniting everyone to overthrow his regime. He cares more about Clara Garcia the leader of a guerrilla group known as Libertad than the actual person responsible for his downfall. Aside from Anton, most of the other villains are incredibly bland and are portrayed in the most cartoonish way possible. Far Cry 6 shoves a long list of villains in your face and the game could easily work with two-thirds of its bad guys completely gone. The disappointing part is that villains such as El Doctor or Bembe, the most Far Cry-esque characters of this game, never get enough time to develop. Instead, other villains you barely interact with are under the game's focus. Most of the time, I didn't even care about them and just pushed myself to take them out for the sake of story progression. 
To make things even worse, none of the huge cast of villains ever interact with one another. You would expect them to either help each other or learn how to defuse the ever-growing threat of the guerrillas in their own region. This made every single region self-contained and disconnected from the rest of the world. The same thing applies to the support characters as well. There are far too many of them, most of them are extremely forgettable, and they use lots of MCU-style humor. This thing single-handedly prevented the game's atmosphere from remaining dark and gritty, which is something Far Cry tries to sell to you in the first few minutes of its opening gameplay. Instead, the whole story feels like a parody of what a dictator regime would look like. Also while we're on the topic, I believe when it comes to supporting characters, missions and stories, the Maximus Matanzas group storyline was the worst compared to other factions despite the point it tries to make. The guerrilla factions also suffer from the aforementioned self-contained problem as none of these groups are willing to help Danny or other factions regain the control of an opposite region from Castillo's forces. By now I mentioned Danny's name a couple of times, and let's say I'm glad that Ubisoft went back to the voiced main character style, as this was one of my biggest gripes with Far Cry 5's silent deputy. Let's face it, the deputy never had enough depth to his character compared to other silent protagonists such as Gordon Freeman from Half-Life 2, so making him totally silent felt ultimately wrong. Danny, on the other hand, always reacts to everything. The voice actors of both male and female versions have done a great job portraying feelings, and to add even more personality to the character, Danny might sing from time to time. However, changing the perspective of cutscenes from first person to third person deprived the intimidating feeling of interacting with characters for the sake of a cinematic experience. Danny's overall backstory justifies some of the actions the protagonist takes, but when it comes to the finale, the story rushes to its closure, everything starts to fall apart and the abrupt ending makes everything seem pointless. Danny doesn't have many choices in the story sequences, and even in the rare few moments that the game allows you to choose, your choices do not affect the story in any meaningful way. The best example would be the McKay mission, where you get to kill him or let him escape. The outcome for choosing either of those options is limited to the reward you're getting for completing the mission. This could have been solved in creative ways. Imagine if killing him would lead to a different outcome for La Morale Group. Or if we look at the bigger picture, imagine if capturing every outpost would actually grant us a different ending. Of course, in that case the map size should have been reduced, since it would become extremely tedious otherwise. But at least in that way, there would have been more incentive for players to capture those bases and gave them more reason over simply unlocking a new point to fast travel. Also, you're supposed to feel like you're trapped in a harsh world with limited technology, an extremely low number of supplies, oppressed environments, and the constant presence of the oppressors. But to my surprise, controlling Danny makes you feel like Rambo or an unstoppable tank that can solo the entire universe with a gun and a knife and lots of ammo. Therefore, I strongly believe that the alternate ending where Danny goes to America is the canon ending of the game, as it avoids almost every problem the game has and seems to be the most reasonable outcome from the story's perspective. Since Ubisoft Toronto doubled down on some RPG mechanics, enemies now have health bars above their heads. There's also an active level scaling system which grows higher as Danny levels up. You can also use multiple different ammo types, unlock armor set skills, and craft a new tool called Supremo. Despite all of that, Far Cry 6 lacks a proper skill tree system, which is one of the major drawbacks of the game compared to the previous ones. To make it even worse, it seems like the developers really didn't think it through while they were implementing these systems. The clear case for that is that I managed to beat the game from start to finish with the early game weapons and armor set. 
as I didn't find any incentive for changing them. There are also different ammo types in the game. For example, you can craft poison rounds, soft target rounds, blast rounds, and more. But crafting armor piercing rounds is enough to beat the game from start to finish. This means even if you go to a higher level area, while enemies get spongier than usual, it's still possible to easily take down enemies with these bullets by targeting their heads. This ultimately renders the build system which comes with the armor sets useless. For example, there's a poison build that does a lot of damage to enemies, but why would you waste your time to unlock every piece of that armor set when you can easily one-shot every single enemy in the game from the beginning? All of this begs the question, why did Ubisoft even bother with the level system to begin with? Did they really think the combination of these mechanics is a better replacement for the skill tree? Also, while you can choose the Guerrilla difficulty, which forces you to use the game's many different systems, no matter how hard you turn your game, the AI is so painfully dumb that no amount of minimal heads-up display elements or ammo scarcity can fix it. The open world in Far Cry games were never small, but Far Cry 6 goes all out to feature the biggest map in the series. Yara is a tropical island with lots of jungles, villages, towns, and an actual capital city, which is a first for the series. But due to the sheer size of the game, there isn't much to do in the city and it feels very rushed. This city is also another factor that alienates the game when we compare it to its predecessors since every previous Far Cry game took place in a mysterious, wild, or uncharted piece of land, seeing a civilized country like Yara with cities and highways doesn't sit right with this game. Someone at Ubisoft really thought bigger is better, so they tasked the team with making a huge world with less interesting stuff to do. This single design choice had drastic consequences that affected the gameplay in unpleasant ways. Firstly, it's not fun to move around the map for multiple reasons. Running and walking around is painfully slow. So, you're left with transporting options such as horses, vehicles, and aircraft. In terms of performance, there aren't major differences between cars. There are tons of checkpoints on the road that either require you to capture them or slightly change your way. However, choppers and airplanes are genuinely the best way to travel around the map. But there is a catch. To use them, first you need to take down anti-aircraft guns. And each region is packed with AA guns. And if you don't destroy them, they will shoot your aircraft down. Unless you're flying very close to the ground. This mechanic by itself is very clever, since it creates an incentive for the player to explore the land, but it turns into a staggering chore rather quickly due to the number of AA guns you have to destroy. Secondly, the game immediately screws every single traversal mechanic with another odd design choice. In almost every open world game, and I don't necessarily mean the Far Cry series, the player must first discover a key location to be able to teleport back to it later on. Therefore, a first time discovery is mandatory in every game. But this is not the case with Far Cry 6 as you can purchase hideout maps without ever setting foot on any of those lands before. You can even airdrop Danny on some of those hideouts and use the wingsuit mechanic to get to your desired location quickly without the need for any vehicle or aircraft. This way, you don't even need to destroy the AA guns. Amigos are the companions you can summon to help you through the game. But I don't really understand Ubisoft's angle with this companion list. There's zero human companion that you can unlock, and the list includes a rooster that can attack and kill enemies. If this game had taken itself a bit more seriously, things would have been in a much better state. But it's worth noting that except for Chorizo, I hated these companions so much that I didn't bother using them at all. The game also lacks some of the memorable missions that made the series stand out. There used to be missions in the past games where your character hallucinates and you would do tons of weird and fun stuff. Sadly, there's only a small glimpse of them left in this game and even then, they aren't as cool as the ones in previous games. I remember in prior games, hunting specific animals would allow the protagonists to craft important upgrades that would either increase the size of their pockets or improve their equipment. 
In Far Cry 6, however, the lack of a proper hunting system bothered me a lot, as you don't need to hunt animals for those reasons. Killing them would only allow you to trade their meat or skin with crafting materials, such as circuit boards. And on top of that, you can shoot animals with any weapon. As long as you have unlocked and upgraded the Hunter Lodge building, there's no need to be worried about damaging the animal meat with your bullets. While the fishing mechanic is extremely simplified, at least it's a bit different compared to the animal hunting system. But let's be honest, the mechanic was already introduced in Far Cry 5, so I guess we should just be happy that this one wasn't cut out or changed. The final nail in the game's coffin is the endgame content, which is called Insurgency. No matter how many areas you liberate during your normal playthrough, as soon as you finish the game, a weekly quest begins and resets the state of the game's map and makes Castillo's loyalists take back those regions you have already liberated once and now you have to fight back and recapture them again. By now we learned that there's no need to use better equipment. Hunting and looting materials are pointless and there's no need to drive or fly around the map. If I wanted to sum up Far Cry 6's open world in two words, I would call it an anti-exploration game. This is a video game that actively tries to prevent players from using its mechanics, and everything is rendered useless within minutes of their introduction. Far Cry 6 doesn't feel like a Far Cry game because it deliberately removed all of the factors that made the older games fun. Instead, they are replaced with soulless RPG systems, a boring but visually stunning world, and lots of questionable design choices. There are far too many characters in Far Cry 6. The lead bad guy is a forgettable villain which is a waste of the actor's potential. There are lots of goofy things that break the immersion and don't fit the overall theme of the game. If you enjoyed the previous games, I don't recommend playing Far Cry 6 at all. I would go as far to call this game a Just Cause sequel since it shares more similarities to that franchise instead of the one it represents. While it's important to implement new changes to keep a long-running series stay refreshing, it's a hard task that can end up disrupting a game's image and identity and result in losing fans. Let's hope Ubisoft fixes these issues in the next entry of the franchise. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe, like, and share your opinion in the comment section. Till the next one, I'm the Folk, signing out.